I'm probably the only one in this room coming from a colder site than this. And guess what? We are arranging the next meeting. <laughs> but it will be summer, so I can guarantee it will be warmer than what we have outside here now. <laughs> I work at Tromsø Museum, the Arctic University of Norway. So I'm um, about 15 hours drive north of where we have the conference next year. So it's, uh, it's, it's not, you're not going up there, except if you want to go on one of the post-conference excursions. I'm arranging one uh, in Tromsø for those interested in seeing the midnight sun, the Arctic uh, alpine plants, a bird excursion, you know, local museums. Okay. <laughs> My interest is most of all vascular plants. And actually, Sally over there got me into barcoding years ago uh, when you came over to Norway and gave us these ideas and this concept, and then we started barcoding the flora of Svalbard. Uh, now I have done the, I've been leading the genome skimming of the Norwegian and polar flora within the Noble project, which Torbjörn Ekrem, the guy you just saw on, on, um, on video, is leading. So now you see many of this, well, I think I'm number 16 in the row. And I saw we are about the sixth place in number of sequences, but we're actually on the third place in number of named species. And I think that reflects some of the status where Norway is at the moment. We have, for example, barcoded 1,600 plant species. That is about the total flora, depending on how you count it, because it's the well, the last little bit of it, it's the hybrid species, it's the subspecies, it's the introduced flora. Where do you stop? How much, when have you done, done it all? And also, uh, increasing speed of barcoding at this level is very hard because this is the stage where it's more and more work to, to add a new species. The common ones are very easy to get hand of, but the rare ones or the yeah, this is the, the stage where we, where we struggle to get material. Except for arthropods, where we have done probably around half of the species in Norway. So the Norwegian Barker of Life Network, NUBOL, was established 10 years ago. And we did have a lot of funding. It was led by uh, Torben Ekrem from the uh, University in, in Trondheim, Natural History Museum there. And we have only four natural history museums in Norway. And each of us had one barcode manager. They had an additional person in Trondheim to lead it all. And more or less all institutions working on, in biology did contribute. So more or less the whole sort of uh, biological community has, has contributed to this. And the, because we're now running out of funding, we just submitted a research proposal not to do many more species, but to increase the sequencing facilities and also to do more uh, full genome sequencing and have a standard sort of minimum finance to, to cover standard barcodes of any new species that, that we manage to get our hands on. The nature of this, the project we are running is also a bit reflecting what the status we are now. So Turbin Ekrem has a project with this very nice acronym eBay environmental barcoding of aquatic invertebrates. This has a part of, of library construction, so it will add more to the reference library, but it's mostly applied on, on aquatic invertebrates. I'm running one project called Ecogen, Ecosystem Change and Species Persistent Over Time, a genome-based approach. And we do uh, sediment cores, uh, not for the last thousand years, but for the time back to the, the, so this is the extent of the glaciation. So we go back to as far as we can get at that site, which is 10 to 15,000 years on most sites, up to 26,000 years. And we take the course and we do plant DNA metabar coding. But we also uh, struggle a bit to, to develop good methods to do the herbivores, uh, mainly mammals, but also the, the, the major insect herbivores. And we have also one uh, project with organ is applied, but it's a, a 
PhD training networks, where there are 15 PhD students all started last year in May. They are at a different, so it's, a, it's financed by the uh, European Research Council. So they're at a different institution. They have, they come together for training so they get all the same type of training. Several of the PhD uh, collaborate. They visit each other's labs. And uh, well, it's, as its name says, it's plant ID. So it's all on, on, uh, on uh, vascular plants. Part of it, it's applied like on timber, identifying <coughs> illegal timber trade, for example. Part of it is more on taxonomy and, um, and sort of selected species. But it's also a new way to get funding, to have the, the, the training part of it. I discussed a little bit earlier the, the, the strength and weakness of our project. Uh, I think we have been quite good at using the national resources, uh, both in terms of the different institutes. Uh, most, most institutes have contributed. We have good support from the National uh, Taxonomy Initiative and the um, Norwegian Environment, Environmental Agency. The problem is, of course, we are a small nation. When I came into Toronto yesterday, I looked at all these houses, and I just had it. I thought it is just incredibly big, and I thought, how many inhabitants do Toronto have? It's 6.6 .6 million. That's more than the total population of Norway. <laughs> so it's <laughs> we, are, we are not many in Norway, and it's a long country, and uh, we are scattered. So we don't have the taxonomic expertise on all uh, on all groups. We hope we get future funding for this uh, new infrastructure program, but it will be less sort of standard bar co code, uh, more full genome uh, resources. Yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you.